Hi everyone, Darren here, and today's episode is going to be about this Mark III car from New Zealand. It's a, uh, a car that was towed to me. It's a cranking, no starting situation. The customer is complaining about uh, some smoking. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this thing and see what, what's happening. Um, look at that cool New Zealand interior, unique. That is a cool car. I think this might be original paint. Uh, anyway, so we've got the 65D ignition system and uh, high compression 998. Despite the way it looks, the customer did say it was recently rebuilt about 10 or 15,000 miles ago. So hopefully it's uh, still just as strong as when it was rebuilt. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, dig in and see what we can find. Since this is actually in my garage, uh, there's going to be some things that I'm going to do here that I wouldn't normally do in the field, but I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and show anyway what I'm doing. So stay with me while I go through all these steps. All right, well, step one is to take this air filter housing off. He tried using starter fluid to get this started, but it wasn't working, so we'll go ahead and take this off. And he's got a nice little K&N filter in there. I'll have to take a look at that condition later. Looks like we've got the... HIF 38 does not have a crankcase breather hooked up or an overflow pipe. Um, also, it looks like the choke mechanism just isn't attached anymore here, so that's probably not helping him start the car. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just check the oil level and see where we are. This is kind of how they are when I get to them. Customers bring cars in for, you know, sitting after long periods of time, and they're generally not in good condition. Oh. Look at that black oil. Huh, looks overfilled. Ooh, and it smells really gassy too. I wonder if this car actually has a bad fuel pump and it's leaking into the into the oiling system. At least there's oil in it. All right, so next up, I'm gonna pull the plugs, check those conditions, and then the customer did ask me to do a compression test, so I'll go ahead and do that while I've got the plugs out. All right, so I've loosened all the plugs up, and what I like to do is I always like to blast them with air just to clean any of the dirt and debris away from the threads before I pull the plugs out. All right. So, let's have a look and see what these things look like. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ooh. Ooh, that one's oily. Yeah, so you can see from the plugs that this thing was running very, very rich. Uh, we'll note that the plugs are BPR6 ES plugs, um, but they're now they look fairly new-ish, but that is that is really filthy. All right, like I said before, the customer asked me to do a compression test, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do the compression test and see what the numbers are. So I've now I've got the compression test hooked up to cylinder one, and I've got my remote trigger set up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open the throttle, and we'll do a compression test for cylinder one. It looks like we got about 115 pounds on the first cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the second cylinder and retest. All right, cylinder number two, here we go. That looks about the same, 115. So that's promising. Cylinder three, here we go. Ooh, 125. All right. And finally, cylinder number four. Wow, almost 130. All right, so this seems okay. It's a little low on cylinders one and two, but across the board, they all seem to have good compression numbers. And remember, these numbers, I'm at high altitude. I'm at a mile high of elevation, or 3,000 something meters. 
So uh, our numbers are always gonna look a little lower than sea level just because we have less atmosphere to deal with. So I think these ones are pretty good and I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with my diagnosis. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to the ignition system. I've got the cap off and I noticed that there's a lot of debris inside here and the, the contacts are all arc scored and burned. So I'm gonna petition for a new, uh, new cap rotor and I'm gonna go ahead and measure the ignition wires and we'll see what these are like. I think these are probably a set of factory wires, but I'm gonna go ahead and get my multimeter out and check those as well. All right, got the multimeter. Go ahead and check for zero or whatever the lowest resistance of your wires are. And in the case of mine, it's 0.2 ohms or 0.3. So that's why we check. And then I just take a wire here and we'll go ahead and measure it. Interesting. It's showing uh, 500 ohms. That's promising. Or 433. So I'm going to go ahead and measure the rest and see what they come out as. This is the second wire at 332. Third wire, 337. And the fourth wire is 380, 375, somewhere there. So the wires actually seem like they're uh, good quality, low resistance wires. So I'm going to go ahead and check the coil wire next. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and test the coil wire here. It's about 400. So overall, between the coil and the block, we've got between 7, 700, somewhere in there, 800 ohms. So we definitely want to be uh, saving these wires because they're, they're in good shape. Although this coil wire end is a little, little corroded but I think these wires are certainly usable. Next up is the coil. This should be a low resistance coil given that it's running a 65D distributor here and this should be variable dwell. So let's go ahead and see if he's got the right coil on here. Uh, 1.6. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down to a 0.8 ohm coil. Uh, actually, the resistance went up. Interesting. Yeah, the connections on here are a bit dirty, but yeah, 1.7. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace this coil with a 0.8 ohm one. So I wanted to mention that the 65D wants to have a 0.8 ohm coil, and uh, this could be 1.5 ohm coil if it has a ballast resistor and on this car I did not find any ballast resistor so I wanted to go and double check to make sure that I'm not being fooled so I'm going to check the voltage supply and the voltage supply at the coil is a straight 12 volts so I will go ahead and replace this coil with a, a 1.8 ohm and I have you know new power spark ones here to use so I'm going to go ahead and do that and um, continue on with my checks also, with the 0.8 ohm coil, you can run 35 thousandths plug gaps, and just for fun, I wanted to double check the old gaps, and amazingly, they were actually 35 thousandths. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a fresh set of these in before I do any tuning. Also, one more minor detail. Uh, this coil had its negative post sitting up top here, and with oil-filled uh, Ignition coils, you want to have the post sitting horizontal so that the air bubble that's inside here sits up. So if this is pointing like this, the air bubble will rest against this area of the coil and cause hot spots. So you always want to make sure they rotate horizontally. Well, I've got the new coil installed. Uh, again, wires mounted horizontally keep the uh, air pocket from getting these contacts too hot. And I went in and checked the vacuum module. The vacuum module is working on this system. So we'll go ahead and continue on with our diagnosis. Well, I've fitted a set of new BP-6ES plugs, the non-resistive type, 
I fitted a set of power spark wires because they are the correct resistance to run non-resistant plugs and I fitted a new cap as well. Um, I spoke with the owner and we decided to go sort of the performance route on this so that's why we changed all this uh, because before I had about 800 ohms resistance so I would have had to run resistive plugs but because I'm using these wires I can run non-resistive plugs and it brings my total resistance down to about uh, I think about 4,000 ohms, so which is an excellent level to be at if you're really chasing performance. So anyway, um, he also asked me to do a valve adjustment, so I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off and go through the process of doing a valve adjustment.